G'day everyone, welcome back to the lab. We have a MacBook Pro here today, it's a 2015 13-inch uh, Retina, A1502 is the actual model number, and the keyboard doesn't work on it, but the trackpad or mouse pad does. So what we're going to do is we're going to diagnose this, and the first step is we're going to actually disconnect the keyboard here, and we're going to have a look at that little connector. So we'll have a look at that under the microscope right now. We'll just peel up our tape. And if we have a look, our connector looks all relatively clean. So what we'll do is we'll unplug our connector here. Um, and we'll plug in this spare keyboard and we'll see if this keyboard does a trick and fixes the, uh, the MacBook. Um, so we can tell if it's the actual keyboard itself or it's the logic on the um, Mac logic board itself. So uh, we'll uh, unplug that keyboard now. Get our little spudger in, pull up the lever quickly. I have to use the other end. There we go. And then we'll just pull back. And our little connector looks pretty clean here. So we'll plug in our spare keyboard and we'll see what happens. It's always a bit of a pain in the ass to get in. There we go. All locked in. Just close our locking handle. We'll get our test keyboard here. We've just plugged it in. So now we'll actually boot up the MacBook and we'll see if we can get any letters to come up on the screen. So there's our MacBook. We'll just type a few things. And we can see that our little test keyboard is working because we've actually got letters being typed into the password field. So it looks like uh, the original keyboard is stuffed and we're going to have to uh, change it out. So we'll move on to that right now. We had to remove our logic board and battery but be aware, when you take out the old battery, you have to replace it with a brand new battery. And that's because Apple stick the old battery in with double side tape and make it impossible to take out. And uh, there's even a little bit of a hazard of a fire um, if you take it out and accidentally punch one of the cells. So maybe a little bit of excitement for later in the video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work our way around the MacBook in an anti-clockwise direction, taking out all the screws, detaching plugs, removing the logic board, the daughter board, the battery, and all components, uh, bringing it down to the keyboard level. We get our T5 screwdriver and we'll remove this little speaker here. Three screws. Lift our speaker out. And we'll disconnect the cable down here. Put our spudger underneath. It could be a little bit of adhesive here and give it a slight twist and break that connector away and then pull it forward to clear the chassis at this point. Nice and carefully. And that's our first speaker out. Put the screws back in their original positions. We next remove our battery connector. So we peel this back gently and then we jimmy up the battery connector on both sides. Don't use anything metal, just our plastic spudger. And 
our battery connector is now free. Remove this little connector here, pliers, grab the tape, just peel back gently. Just enough to clear the connector. Disengage our little gate by flicking upwards, pull backwards and straight out. Continuing down, we move our little power connector. Let's get that little flat ribbon. Give it a slight jiggle backwards. Break that adhesive. And our power is disconnected. Moving down to our screen connector, we just peel up our little tab. Pull the lever back. And our video connector is free. Disconnect our little Wi Fi cables. I usually get the plastic spudger underneath. Work it up towards the connector. And just give it a quick flick up. Nice and gently. And there are Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cables gone. Next, we've got to just unpeel this connector here. Work our spudger out underneath. Just peel it up. Nice and gentle. And then this connector here. And then we don't get into the connector. Pry them up a little bit, get the pliers in there and just pull straight backwards. And then peel everything back towards our little Wi-Fi card. While we're here, we move on to the fan connector. Just flick this back with your spudger and then Lever it up slightly and push it backwards. It should just pop out. Well, we will remove our daughterboard connectors. So this is our cable. And we need to remove these two shields here because this cable goes right across to the daughterboard. So we'll work on this right side shield first. our little shield up left side shield then pry up our cable right side left side then we'll put that up the back we next remove our fan assembly. Take out three screws, T5s, one, two, three. Keep all these screws arranged in the right position. So when you rip the fan assembly out, you can put them back in their original holes. So you know what went where. We move up to our next speaker, T5. Lift your speaker assembly up. That's it. Unplug your speaker from this location here. Slightly pry your cable up with your little spudger. We'll have a little bit of adhesive there. And just give it a qu quick twist. Should pop up. Then remove that whole speaker assembly. Just gently prying up that cable. 
as you go. We remove this other connector to the daughter board by squeezing the tabs either side and by giving it a bit of a wiggle backwards. We remove all our logic board screws starting in this corner right here using our T5 or Torx 5 as usual. All these screws are the same, so just put them in their own separate pile. We've got a little Phillips screw here, so we'll just take him out. That's for our heat sink. Lift up our fan assembly at the back and it should just slide out. Put that aside. Lift the heat sink again and our logic board should just pop out if we just give them a slight wiggle backwards. And we have our logic board out. We next rip out our daughter board assembly and we'll just take out this screw here, it's a T5. Pull our cables back and we've got a T8 we're going to pull out. Gently pick up your board, give it a bit of a wiggle and it should just pop out. Next, to get access to the keyboard, we have to remove the battery here and we're going to need our Torx T5 screwdriver once again and we're going to take out this screw down here so we'll rip that out now and we'll peel this little cable back and just rest it back here Apple in all their wisdom have glued this battery in there are various ways of removing these batteries but don't do this at home. We're just gonna clean up any residual tape from the battery by using some isopropylene alcohol and a technical tissue. So we've got all that goopy stuff gone. And now we have to remove this plate here behind the mouse because it's actually covering the top of the keyboard. And we're going to use our T4 or Torx screwdriver to take out all these little screws here. 10 of them in total. So we'll do that right now. We'll peel up our plate with a plastic spudger. Put that aside. And now we have full access to the keyboard itself with nothing obstructing it. We remove our backlight here behind the keyboard. And for that, we're going to need a little bit of heat. So we switch on our heat gun to 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit, the old money. And we're gonna start off in this corner here, slowly heating it up and then peeling away the backlight and moving around in a clockwise direction. And we'll check that out under the microscope. It's a matter of getting the adhesive up to temperature so it melts. Poke in here with our little tweezers, trying not to tear anything. Slowly working our way along.
trying not to burn my little fingers. You may have to get the tweezers in here. Just to peel up that little tag. Nice and gentle. Now we're removing our backlight reflector, the rest of it. We have to keep this intact because we're going to use it again. And we're just going to take it back. And our little backlight reflector is off. Right, we're down to the keyboard level. This is the back of our keyboard here, and we have a replacement keyboard that's gonna pop in. Here's a new one, all shiny and new. The keys on the front, the metal in the back, and I usually pick these up from eBay. We're just gonna put into the uh, search window um, the MacBook uh, model number and keyboard, and you usually get a couple of hits. These are worth, you know, 30 or $40. And Apple trying to make MacBooks unrepairable as usual, put in roughly 120 rivets all the way through. Uh, but today we're going to rip out the keyboard, take out all the residual rivets and we're going to screw the keyboard in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in this corner here and just lift the keyboard up gently, pop a few rivets and then we're going to rip it out. So we'll continue on with this now. We're just shoving our screwdriver underneath, picking away at the corner, breaking rivets as we go. Just trying to lift it up a bit. So I've got a corner to grab onto and just rip this keyboard out. So it's got to bend it up enough. And there we go. We have something to grab onto. We're going to spread some tape out along the back because as we rip it out, rivets are going to go flying everywhere and the tape will secure all those rivets. So I'll spread that tape out now. Now we flop our MacBook over the edge. So we just open it up and flop it on the edge of the workbench. And the reason we want to do that is because we're going to put a lot of pressure on here and I don't want to crack the screen. So with that firmly in position, we just put our left hand down, holding the chassis down and then give it a heave ho. Getting started is the hardest thing. Here we go. It's never easy. done it's all out now we have some residual uh, rivets left in the uh, top case of the macbook and we're going to remove those rivets with the auto center punch 
and it's a normal auto center punch that you get from an automotive store. Um, they cost around $30 and traditionally they would have a pointed tip but we've put this on the grinder and we've produced a nice flat tip on this and we did that so it engages with the rivets in the top case a little bit better. So we'll remove a few of the rivets under the microscope. All we have to do is get our center punch and engage it into the side of the old rivet. Push, click one way, push, click the other way, and it just pops straight out like that. All the rivets have been dug out from the uh, underside of the top case and there's plenty uh, that had to be removed. Now is a go good opportunity, while the keyboard's not in, just to spritz up the top case with some isopropyl alcohol and get the old scour out and just give it a bit of a clean on top in between all the keys and get rid of any crud and rubbish and then give it a quick wipe down with some technical wipes, the old Kimtex, and just clean up anything here. There we go. And now we're all okay to reassemble the computer with the brand new keyboard and the uh, battery in there. Let's put in our new keyboard. We'll just slot it into place and we're going to secure the screws in the corners first and then we'll go for the centers just to get it all flattened out nice and even in the x and the y axis uh, just to make sure it's kind of aligned properly and then we'll pop in the rest of the screws so we'll pop in under the microscope and we'll get our first screw in here's our first screw Top left corner, get it nice and perpendicular, start turning gently, working that screw in to its proper position. Top right. For the next hour, myself and Kaz had the joyous task of putting over 100 screws back into the keyboard to replace all those rivets. Now we've pushed the MacBook aside for one moment and we've got to separate the reflector and the mask of the backlight and we're going to do that by just dropping it in this little container and hitting it with some isopropyl alcohol. Just pour it in. Plenty in there and we're just going to slosh it around let it soak in there for a while just to get rid of any rubbish and to separate these two layers of the keyboard and then we'll let it dry out and then uh, we'll put it on the back of the new keyboard to rebond our backlight onto the back of the keyboard we're going to need to lay down some double sided tape and we just put that in channels across through here so we can actually bond the backlight back down so we'll move on with that now Now we apply some double-sided tape to the inside of the reflector, but we don't peel off any of the paper. We now place the shadow mask of the backlight down, apply some more double-sided tape, put the reflector in place, and smooth out with a paddle pop stick. Next up, we put on the backing plate 
for the trackpad on the MacBook. We put our daughter board in, followed by the motherboard or main logic board. Then the battery, peeling the protector off the new adhesive underneath. Right speaker, left speaker. We screw everything in, then we plug in all connectors. Plug in speaker, daughter board and fan connectors. Through to the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connectors. Screen. MagSafe. All the way through to keyboard, mouse, plus everything in between. We now secure the bottom cover with 10 pentalobe screws. We are all done. The keyboard works. And we get a fresh new battery. It's taken a couple of hours, but at the end of the day, we have fixed a MacBook some would consider unrepairable. If you're interested in seeing other stuff repaired, check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Other than that, we will see you next time in the lab.